Hey guys and welcome back to another Unrension 4 tutorial. In today's video we'll be going over how to create a very basic but quite cool looking CSGO crate opening system. So it doesn't have to be CSGO based, that's just what this one looks like, but it's basically a crate opening system. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So I hit play, we have this screen here where I can open a crate and you'll see these are the different items I have inside it. So you can obviously choose what you want to have inside it. I've just got numbers from 1 through 15. Again, choose what you want. And if we press open, what it's going to do is it's going to spin like this until we eventually end up on the crate that we have, which for me is 6. Now you'll notice that it didn't look absolutely amazing. It did kind of stutter a little bit. Obviously, this is just the basic part which I've got to get the functionality actually set up for it working. You can obviously advance upon this and customize it a lot more to make it look a lot better for you if that's what you wanted. But today we're going to be going over creating the basic system of this, which is just opening a crate and getting an item out of it like this. And it's obviously going to be different and random each time. You can input which items you want, have as many as you want, have the animation look however you want. Again, very easy to customize and add on to yourself. So this is what we're going over in creating today. So without further ado, let me take this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our widget in which we're going to actually have this crate opening inside of. So I'm going to keep the one I have at the moment just as a reference in case I need to access it again. But let's create a new one by right clicking, go into user interface, creating a widget blueprint and I'm going to name this crate opening widget and I'll just name it two like this, opening it up straight away. Now in here, what we want to do is I'm just going to add in a background image as well. So I'm going to get an image, rename this to background and just set this to be 1920 by 1080. So it covers the whole screen. You obviously don't need to do this if you don't want. I just want to just so you can't see the game in the background. So a gray background like that is going to be good for me. Then the important part is this is where we're going to actually add the images for the items. So it's going to scroll through them. So that wants to be in a horizontal box. So we're going to search for that here horizontal box, adding that onto the canvas panel, like so. Now I'm going to show you what I've used last time, so the position and sizing I used last time, but obviously place this wherever you want and how you want it to look for you. But I place mine anchor in the middle, so it stays in the middle of the screen, position of minus 960 on the X, and a position of minus 120 on the Y, and then the size X is going to be 1920, and the size Y is going to be 250. Now that's the sizing and positions I've got. You can obviously put this to whatever you want. And the reason I've done 250 on the size Y is because let me actually show you the images I have for my items. They're gonna be here. These are what I have. Again, it's just numbers one through 15. And the size I've got for them is 250 by 250. It doesn't have to be that if you don't want, but I'd recommend doing something along those lines for what I've got, because it's nice, high quality, and it's a good size as well. As you can see, it's gonna be this big or what you saw in the beginning preview. And again, make sure to anchor it in the middle of wherever you want so it doesn't move from that position. Then inside of this horizontal box, we want to add in all of our images or all of the items and the thumbnails for those items that we have. So again, you can do as many as you want here. I have 15. So what I'm going to do is add in an image, set this to be named one or the name of your item. So maybe you could put AK skin one, whatever you're actually doing. And then the image is going to be the thumbnail you want. So for me, that's one. Then we're just going to duplicate this. So we have two three, four, all the way up for as many as you have. Obviously, that's gonna take quite a lot of time for me to do, it's just quite tedious. All you have to do is basically get all the images you want, rename them to what you want, and then set the image as well. Naming isn't important. However, if you want to then maybe at the end, tell the player what they've got by using the name, you'd want to change it. So again, do this, so duplicate them, rename them, and change their image to be what it should be. But what I'm gonna do is just actually use the ones which I made earlier to just speed up for the purpose of the tutorial. I'm gonna pull a blue Peter. Here's one I made earlier. So let me just get all 15 that I have here and I'm just gonna copy them over to this new one that I have like so. So you should end up having something that looks a little like this. All of your items in the horizontal box, if they go off screen like this, don't worry. We do still want that because obviously it's gonna scroll. We don't want them all on screen at the same time, do we? We want them to scroll through while it's picking which one to choose. So we're going to compile and save that. Now what we want to do now is we actually want to start creating the code for randomizing and shuffling these images. Because obviously we don't want them to all be in order like this and in the same order every time. We want them to be random and to shuffle them. So let's go over to the event graph over here and I'm going to delete event preconstruct and event tick and just use event construct. What we're going to do is we need to get our 
horizontal box as a variable. So you see it's not actually here. So we go back to the designer, select the horizontal box, we can tick is variable up in the top right, go back to our event graph and we can now have it here as a variable which we can use. So let's get the horizontal box, whatever it's named for you. And out of this, we want to get all children. And that's going to get all of the images that we have inside of our horizontal box. And you'll see this has come out as an array. So we're gonna drag out this and get a full each loop. We don't need with a break because we're just gonna go through the whole thing anyway. So get a for each loop like this. Out of the array element, we're going to cast to image because we want to get the image from this element. Because at the moment, what it is, is it's technically a texture. So we put an image in, but the image inside of it is what we want to get. So we're going to get the image from inside of the image. I hope that makes sense. Basically this texture image here. So we'll go back to the graph like this. As image, what we want to do is we want to add this into another array for our items, which we're going to have. So let's create another new variable, naming this items array. And we're gonna change this to be an image variable. So image object reference there, and change this to be an array as well by clicking on the little tic-tac item and going to the three by three array area like this. Compile that, drag this in and get, and out of that, we're going to just get an add. Connecting that into the cast and the as image will go into the select asset there. So we're adding this image of the current image in the horizontal box into the items array of images. Now you might be asking why don't we just add the images straight into here anyway? That's because we can't. So you'll see if you try to add it, it won't be there because we have textures, whereas we need an image. And if you do a texture array, you can't add those into the actual horizontal box. So this is the best way I found of doing it. And once we've done that, what we want to do is we want to then remove this child from the horizontal box because again, we want to put them back in and shuffle them. So we want to basically add them into this array, remove them from the current one, shuffle them and add them back in. So again, add them, remove them, shuffle them, add them. So array element from the for each loop is simply a remove child. And that for some reason isn't working. Let me compile and try again, remove child. I'll tell you why it's not working. What we need to do is actually get the horizontal box then remove child and then the content goes into the array element. So sorry, I was just getting the wrong reference, the wrong target for it. So horizontal box, remove child with that being the target and the content being the array element from the for each loop like this. So what I'm gonna do is select all this and hit C to comment it. And I'm gonna name this adds images to new array plus removes from horizontal box. And then in brackets, I'll just put allows dev to enter images. Because that's what we're doing. You add the image into the horizontal box here, like we have done. That then gets them, adds them into our own array and removes them from the horizontal box. Again, there will be different ways of doing this, but this is the best, most efficient way and easiest way I found for us to be able to do it. So let's compile and save that. Now, one thing I did notice when I was creating this code earlier is sometimes, or actually every time, this loop will not fully complete. So for me, it was only getting to the seventh item in the array and then it will stop. So it will come out completed because it stopped, but for some reason it thought it had done the whole array when it actually hadn't. So that would then lead to some images not being removed and not being added to the new array. So what we need to do is basically just check to see if the array has actually been emptied. So we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch with a completed of the for loop going into the branch there true of this branch is going to go back into the for each loop like this. I'm just going to double click these to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. So what this branch is going to do is it's basically going to see is there anything left in the array? If there is, go back into the loop and do all this again until you have emptied the array completely. And obviously it won't start from the beginning. Well, it will, but the beginning will now be the latest image because we've removed the other ones and false will then go into the rest of the code because the array is now empty. So to see if it's empty or not, I'm going to get a horizontal box, get all children, and out of the return value here, what we're gonna do is just get an is valid index. And we're gonna leave that at zero, and that's gonna be the condition there. So again, let me select this, hit C to comment it, and I'll name this if array isn't empty, empty again, or do code again. So basically what's happening is this array won't always empty on the first time, I'm not really too sure why it does that, but for some reason it does. So what we're doing is checking to see if it is empty. If it isn't empty, we're gonna do this code again to finish emptying the array. And then once we've done that with it, we can then 
and move on to the rest of the code. So once it has emptied, it's gonna come off a of false. And so off a of false here, we now want to just shuffle this. So we've added all of the items into our array. We want to now shuffle this to get a random order and then add them back into the horizontal box. So what we can do is get our items array. And now there's a very nice and easy code for actually shuffling something. You don't have to get all the items, change their order, do all that. There's actually just a node called shuffle, which will do all of that for us. So that makes our life really easy. So that will go into false there like so. And then after we've shuffled it, what we need to do is then add these back into the horizontal box. Now you can of course shuffle this as many times as you want. I'm just gonna do one for me as that's fine. But again, you can do that three or four times if you want, just by simply duplicating that and connecting it in again, like so. But I just want it once. So then we're gonna go into a for each loop once again, the array being our items array this time instead of the horizontal box. And the array element is going to go to add the image back into the horizontal box. So let's get horizontal box here and add child. So earlier we removed child, now we're adding a child with the array element being the content like this. And that is all we need to do here. So I'm gonna select this, hit C to comment it, naming this randomize order or shuffle order, whatever makes more sense for you. So that is all we need to do for the moment. So again, what we're doing now is we are getting all of the images inside of the horizontal box, adding them to an array, removing them from the box, shuffling them and then adding them back in. So we now have a random order. So it's gonna be different each and every time. So let's hit compile and save that. And so that'll be it for this video. We're gonna finish this off in the next video, which will be in two days time, or if you're watching this in the future, it should already be up. But what we've gone over today is actually just creating the items themselves into our array and putting them into the widget for the player to see and shuffling them through in a random order. And then the next video, what we're gonna go over is actually opening the crate so we can now get the item from it as well. So the reason I put it into two parts is because in total this was about a 30 minute video. So I don't want it to be that long. I want to put it into two parts of around 10 to 15 minutes each. So that seems to be perfect. So that's why I've done that. So hopefully that's not too bad for you. And so thanks so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.